Tuesdays again. So it's been a terrible weather today. And recently we'll do some films. So we've got a stock of films in front. Well, it was pouring down the rain. It was, <laughs> it was icy cold. So much so we were soaked through. So I went up, had a shower, got changed and to do the films and, and come down. As soon as we sat down, the sun came out. You wouldn't believe it, would you? That's the life of it. So anyway, I've got something um, pretty unusual today for you to see. Um, and, you know, I don't think many people would have seen one. So let's just get it up. So that's a, a collar for a horse. All made of steel, um, pressed out obviously, and um, there's different names for them. They were made only, only by one or two companies, I think. And they open at the bottom, you see. So this would be hung up on a beam, this collar. If we look at the top here, you can see that there's a ball with a, a ring goes in there and you can hang it up. So the horse would stand underneath, it would drop down, you'd lock it together, and that would be your horse in the collar ready to go to work. The only addition it would have is obviously it needed some sort of padding around it. But we'll talk about this collar first. So there was loads of things done. Whoever you know engineered this and made it was really clever. If we look in here, for instance, this unfortunately is all rusted away. But this is a spring. So it's a piece of steel that wraps around inside this body so that when the strain's put on here, you can see there's a certain amount of movement. Can you see? So it was soft for the horse to pull away. So you can see that this would just move together very slightly. Well then, imagine it pulling a, a fair weight. These were used, um, I suppose there was other reasons as well, but uh, they were used for emergency services. So fire engine, horse strong fire engine, all this would be hanging above the stall. All you would have would be a bridle and a collar. That is all they would have on, a bridle and a collar. There'd be no, no pad, no bridging, no crouper, just a bridle and a collar. So the bridle would come on. Now the bridle itself would have been, you know, we talked before, when you look back at an old film, you'll see a military bridle. That's what they would use. So they'd be tied in the stall, in a tie stall. They'd be tied in there. They'd be brought out onto, and this would just drop on. Now, obviously you couldn't have metal laying against a horse. So they had to have some sort of pad, yeah? Now these would clip over and hold the pad in place, yeah? Or help to hold the, hold the pad in place. And these would be for your reins to go through the turret. Now, if you look at these, they would be quite high up. Normal rain turret would be down here, yeah? These would be quite high up. So that when it was on the horse's back, you know, would clear his back going up to the driver. They wouldn't be down here, in other words as low as they might be. These hooks here that are on the side, you can see this one here, I'll just see if I can take that out. Such a shame really that this one, but this was sprung steel. You know I just talked about taking the load off the horse's shoulder. It was sprung steel formed in that shape to fit inside. This one's broken in two unfortunately, such a shame. And this one's actually uh, still there. It's this one's the one that's broke this side. But um, a real shame that is because it would have been nice to, uh, what's it, there's actually I think three plates, three plates forming the spring, you know, making the spring work. Let's that one out for a minute down there. So as the horse pulled, I mean obviously the horse's head would be coming from this way, as he pulled, this would be sprung loaded to ease him as he went away. So it felt softer on him, yeah? So you've got a, a brass plaque up here, and it had a pattern number, etc. and each collar was numbered. I don't know particularly why, but a lot of things back in the day, lovely phrase, isn't it, back in the day? Um, quite a modern thing, really, but, um, but 
back in the day they would be uh, numbered. This is number 47 of whatever run they might have done, five, six hundred thousand, who would know? So, yeah, each one is numbered. So you, these, this would help to hold the pad onto your collar, yeah, there. And this would be your turret for your reins. And here, so you can see the hook comes up here, look, can you see? So you drop a ring onto there, just a ring onto there, with the trace attached, and it would lay in there. And obviously would find it very difficult to fall out even if the horse was at rest. It would lay in there. So a combination really, I suppose, these are not unlike, you'd have on a set of uh, Shire horse harness, heavy horse harness, working horse harness, but with this bit turned up, so it would just drop on there quick, the trace, be ready to go. Some of them I've seen are a fixed trace that's on there. Yeah, so there's a metal there's a ring on there and you would, you know, if it ever needed repairing, you put a new leather piece on. But that's what it is, yeah. So people refer to them as fireman's collars, like that. But anyone that had to get all seen quick to go to work, this is what they would use. And it's got you know quite a bit of shape to it if you look carefully so this is flat at the front and why shouldn't it be but if we look at this side here you can see it coming in and coming out yeah and surprisingly so at the bottom here we've got some different holes can you see here and here yeah so you could set the collar to fit each collar fitted up to a certain size so it would vary by about three inches or so yeah so yeah, that's a, an emergency collar, if you like. I have known, or I've been told, I don't know, but I've been told when I was a, a young man, uh, I worked with a fellow who was getting on in years himself, and his dad was still alive in his late 80s, and he used to drive a coach, a road coach. When the railways come along, there were still lots of road coaches linking small towns together where there wasn't a railway, so you could get up there and you could get on the train and go anywhere, like the long distances, north to south, east to west. But uh, the small bits were picked up. And uh, I've, I've heard tell of one of these collars being carried on a coach. So obviously there wouldn't be any variety of horses to pick up as there were, so they'd have a collar like this. If they had to get one to come along, they'd be able to drop it onto most horses. Now you see this one, I only know the size of these experience, but she's a 22, can you see? Yeah, so I know, you know, if I've got three inches above my fingers there, that's a 22 inch collar, right? And she's eight and a half wide, you know, you can measure them that way by, um, but that's it. So for a Black Mariah being a police vehicle, ambulance, and certainly the fire brigade used them. So they would just drop onto the horse, push it together, put the pad over the horse's neck first, obviously, put it together, clip it up, to put the bit onto the onto the um, onto the head collar. They'd hang the bit on the head collar, and away you go. That be it. Reins on. So literally seconds. They would have it honest. When you think on a road coach, they change a team of horses, I think, I can't remember now exactly, but somewhere around 28 seconds, they'd have a team changed. I think that's somewhere around the fastest it was done, was 28 seconds. I would, don't hold me to that, because I, I can't really remember. Um, so there you go. There's the collar. This is a number five. Um, and they went, you know, from, I don't know, three to 10, I suppose, whatever. But this is a number five. So that would hang up above, as I say, on this little ball here at the top. You can see there's a hole through there. Yeah, that would hang up above the horse. Um, and uh, the old collar would open. I mean, you've got to remember this is old now, you know, very old. Funny enough, we've got no date on this, which normally these things are dated. They love dating things, they put all, you know. But it wouldn't be hard to get hold of the company records and find out even when this one was made because it's stamped with an individual. Uh, yeah. So that's it. So she drop on, lock together, and away you go. I'm just going to show you now the pad. This is not the pad 
that would be used with this. No question about that. Wouldn't have been used with that collar. But it's one that we use with heavy, horse, heavy horses. And this is an American collar. These rings here would fit on the forewheel of the collar, i.e. where your hands fit behind the piece of tubular shaped collar in the front is called the forewheel, and these would clip onto that. But this would sit inside this collar. This one's not the perfect size to show you, but that would sit up inside the collar, yeah, like that. We'd lay it over the horse's neck, and this would be dropped on over it. This one is a little bit too big, but you get the rough idea of, of what I'm saying. So if we, if we move that out of the way, actually, you look at one side, can you see there how uh, that would fit onto the horse and lay there quite happily, yeah, like that. Now, just while we're on the subject to this, this here is, in my opinion, the finest liner you can get. These, this one was made by the Amish people out in America, or Canada actually, this one. And this here is stuffed with deer hair. Now they tell me, I don't know whether this is true, but these are hollow. These hairs are hollow fibre, you know, they're, they're hollow inside, the actual each follicle, each hair. So, that's it. And this one's been damaged, but I just thought I'd show you that while we're here, so that's, you know, now they do them in foam and um, leatherette type material. Nothing as good as these. Horse, this one's been well worn. We've used this a lot on heavy horses. And we put them, the only reason I haven't put this one in the washing machine and give it a clean, with, you know, you do it with a scrubbing brush if you want to. Very, very strong cotton material. It's made of, but you can see all the hairs on it here. But if you get a little brush and take them off, then I'll put them in the washing machine and they come up lovely but I've got to sew a piece on there and I do do so <laughs> I've got to sew a piece on there just to uh, get some more hair put and just sew a piece to form it back exactly as it should be so there you go you'd have a pad and your emergency collar now, there's lots of different names for them fireman's collar they call them all sorts of things so as I say just going over it again this is where your traces would fit this is your adjustment here. If you move this, it'll obviously come out more. Um, this is where your traces would hang on. It obviously goes this way round, but these would tell you that, but also the body shape here, you know, for the shoulders, yeah? And that would be it. So what the actual date it's got, I don't know. And with my old eyes, I don't know if I can read this, but I will if I possibly can, but we'll get it on camera. Um, so this was um, made in Birmingham and its number is 47, it's got a pattern number and what colour it is number. So yeah, let's show this, just check this down there. Yeah, she's an eight, an eight up here, yeah. So she's a size eight, not a five. We do have two of them, the other one must be a five. So there you go, that's a bit of interest. Fireman's collar emergency collar but beautifully made the springs inside here out of just plate steel just to ease it when the horse will be working into the collar you'd never believe it would give but it does give um just to, to help the horse to cope with the load so there you go